Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to revisit a very old video that I produced uh, several years ago. and that video is called Academic Ignorance and Stupidity Part 19. So you can, I'll place a link to that video and then I'll just tell you what I had in mind to talk about it today. So let's begin. George Cantor is indisputably the father of all mainstream mathematical cranks. Why? Why do I say that? Well, first of all, he was uh, born in Russia and he died in Germany. And his claim to fame is the observation that certain sets can be systematically named or listed. And of course, this observation became the basis for his bullshit theory of bijective cardinality. So there are several ways to define a countable set A. And the first one is A is countable if and, only a, if and only if its members can be systematically named, or its members can be systematically indexed, or its members can be systematically listed. All these three statements are equivalent. So in order to index a given set with another set, such as natural numbers or rational numbers, it must be the case that the index set itself is countable. That is, its members can be systematically named. And this is indeed the case where natural numbers and nat rational numbers are concerned. For example, the natu natural numbers can be systematically named using any positional radix system. For example, base 10 or decimal. And as for the rational numbers, there is the Cantor pairing function. So Cantor's ideas were initially just laughed at for what they were. Nonsense. However, his followers, such as the retarded David Hilbert and others, exerted much effort in promoting Cantor's rotten ideas to the point of toxicity. Unfortunately, Cantor's garbage found its way into mainstream mathematics and set back its study several hundred years. I would be lying if I, if I said uh, that the following claim is not true. I would be a millionaire if I had a dollar for every clown who calls himself or herself a set theorist or topologist. Cantor's unremarkable initial idea of countable set would have been benign had Cantor's dribble ceased right then. However, the absolute rot of his series progressed to different levels of infinity, uh, even when infinity is itself a 100% junk concept, and to a wonderland where Aleph numbers reign supreme. So bijective cardinality is the idea that given any two infinite sets, the elements can be mapped from one set to another. And the first problem with this idea is that points have no size, dimension, or extent. So the only way to think about the problem is to interpret the distinct elements as distances, in which case there is nothing remarkable, because the problem is one of scaling one distance to another. And of course, this was elementary knowledge that was known to cartographers long before Cantor was born. So, since Crank Cantor could not name the elements of certain sets, he concluded the size of such, such sets could be assigned a cardinal number, and Aleph zero was a symbol he introduced to denote the cardinality of the most basic countable set, that is, the natural numbers. And it didn't matter to Cantor that Aleph sub zero is not a number of any kind, and cardinality implies number. Um, he simply believed that he was divinely inspired and that God had revealed these things to him over a period of 20 years. Now, given these divinely inspired ideas, Cantor and his crank followers had no qualms about injecting his hokum into mainstream mathematics courses. Even though no mainstream mathematics professor has a clue what is the concept of number or how to define it, students of mathematics are usually presented with the bowel movement known as the diagonal argument. It's actually a misargument. And it fails at the first step because one must accept that every mythical object known as a real number has an infinite decimal expansion, which is provably wrong, and not just because infinity is an ill-formed concept that has no place in mathematics or any other field of rational thought. So one of Cantor's delusions is that infinity plus infinity is equal to infinity. In, in words, one infinite set added to another gives a resulting set that is infinite. And this becomes problematic if the difference, infinity minus infinity, is considered. Therefore, it is expressly forbidden by a formal decree issued by my intellectual inferiors of mainstream mathematics academia. There are so many problems with Cantor's idiotic 
ideas and theories that I don't intend to address all of them here, save the blunder that the difference is undefined. Now, in the following proof, I shall show you categorically using Cantor's bogus theories that infinity minus infinity is equal to zero in contradiction to his claims. So if you consider this particular quotient here, this quotient, uh, this quotient over here, it's equal to what you see on the right-hand side here, and in turn equal to 1 plus x plus x squared dot 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 2x to the n, where x to the n plus 1 over 1 minus x is equal to this red expression. And of course, um, this finite difference is simply equal to 1 plus x plus x squared all the way up to x to the n. And why is that true? It's true because um, you have 1 over 1 minus x equal to this expression continued indefinitely. So the sets given by x to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 2, and the red set possess exactly the same cardinality because they're described by exactly the same elements. And it's clear the only difference is in sign, that is, the red elements are negative. Therefore, in order for this identity to remain true, which, by the way, it is, um, it must be the case that this sum here is zero. That is, infinity minus infinity must be zero, okay? Which is in contradiction to Cantor's decree. What else did you expect from uh, a man who went insane and was institutionalized? Well, that's pretty much it. My name is John Gabriel, and before I sign off, um, be sure to become a subscriber and spread the news on my channel. And please, if you're interested, and if you can, contribute dollars or credits to my Odyssey channel. It's easy to do. You just go to my Odyssey channel and simply contribute. So that's it for now. I'll be chatting to you hopefully soon again in the near future, trying to expound even more on past uh, videos and a lot of the information that I've shared with you regarding blunders and flaws in mainstream mathematics and also uh, specifically mainstream calculus. Till next time, goodbye.